Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I really appreciate the debate, the tone of the debate today, and I think that was set because of the two uh, uh, fantastic leaders that we have as chairman of our Liquor Committee, Representative Taylor and Representative Costa. So I want to thank both of them for their leadership on this issue. How did we get here today? Um, I can tell you that I've been working on this for 10 years since I've been in the House. Six years ago, four years ago when we started hearings on it, I said to the uh, chairman of the LCB at the time, we have a responsibility as a monopoly to provide the best product, the best service, and the best price. If we did that, we wouldn't be here today. We would not be here today if we did that. We don't do that. So as we traveled across the country on our own dimes, seeing how other states do it, see how other states have converted from a monopoly state to a private sector state successfully, successfully, I might add, in the state of Washington. We've heard some testimony here today about how Washington state was a failure. Well, I can specifically address that and say firsthand that it was a success. It was a success. They started out having some road bumps, but by us taking the time to go look to see how they implemented their process, we were able to, able to tailor this legislation, no pun intended, to avoid the mishaps that took place in Washington State. We heard testimony today that Washington State revenues went down, that sales went down. That's a fact. Sales went down in Washington State immediately after they privatized. We also heard testimony in the, as in the course of this debate that consumers in Washington State went across the border to Idaho or Oregon. That's a fact. They did do that immediately after privatization. We received newspaper articles from those opposed to privatization as we sat in our uh, offices here in Harrisburg, but we decided let's go to Washington and investigate as to why that happened. So we sat down with the LCB of the state of Washington and we asked specific questions as to why these things happened. Well, it turns out when they passed their legislation via referendum in Washington, it wasn't actually legislation, they passed it via referendum, the state stores that sold liquor, they already had beer and wine in, their, in the private marketplace, but the liquor stores had to close on a certain date. When those stores closed, the media campaign in opposition to privatization was saying how prices were going to go through the roof. Prices were going to escalate. There was not going to be any supply in the stores. So what happened? What happened before the state stores stopped selling liquor was all the restaurants, all the individual consumers went and bought everything that was in the stores. But the liquor stores were not going to buy additional product because they knew they would be going out of business in a month or so. So of course their shelves were going to be empty. Why didn't the private sector then fill that void? Why? Because those that were opposed to selling the state store system filed a lawsuit trying to overturn what had happened. Well, is the private sector going to come in and invest millions of dollars in a system that may be thrown out by the courts? I say no, they wouldn't do that. So who was left to sell liquor in that short time frame? Those that were already selling wine and beer, that would be the grocery stores. The grocery stores, we all know, aren't necessarily always the best at doing prices, particularly when there's no competition from those that are experts in this business. So the prices did go up a little bit there. And because the supply was down, there was some border bleed. But what's happened since then? What has happened since the private sector has interjected itself into Washington state? Phenomenal things have happened. We've learned by that, we've learned that what we're going to do is gradually phase out our system. We're going to have a system where our stores remain open. We continue to develop or receive that revenue. As they become unprofitable, their store shelves will reduce their inventory. But at the same time, the private sector will rise to meet the demands. The revenue will continue to be there. 
I think we've done it the right way. For the first time in Pennsylvania history, for the first time in Pennsylvania history, when you go to purchase a bottle of wine at a grocery store, you will be carded. For those of us that are older, we like that idea. You don't get carded when you go to a state store system. State store. Beer being sold at many of our grocery stores right now, some of the grocery stores in the private sector have 100% ID system. We were challenged earlier to ask our conscience, how should we vote? How should we vote? Ask our conscience. Ask your conscience these two questions. Representative from Lancaster County raised this earlier. Should we as the enforcer of the liquor laws in Pennsylvania also be marketing vodka on Mother's Day? Should we be doing that? Ask your conscience that. Is that hypocritical? What does your conscience say to you? What does your conscience say to you as the monopoly buyer? The monopoly buyer of a product in Pennsylvania. When you, when the myth is that we go out and we have this huge um, volume discount that we're getting. Well, where is the discount going? Ask your conscience that. If, we're, if our consumers are going across the border to buy product because it's less expensive in another state, where is that consumer discount going? It's not going to the consumer. I make the case that it's going to overhead, it's going to perks, it's going to benefits. I make the case that the millions of Pennsylvanians need to see the benefits. We need to start thinking about our constituents, our consumers. The reason over the years that our email boxes aren't lighting up over this issue is because we hear it every day back in the district. It's a no-brainer for our consumers. If they were here, they would have voted on this 79 years ago. But because of the process that we have here in trying to juggle the interests of all the licensees, we have a challenge politically over the years to make these tough decisions. And I think I'm really happy that we're going to make that tough decision today. You know, last session, um, we had a bill to privatize and it failed. This session, I had the opportunity to have the uh, beer distributors and their representatives come into my office and I'm sure they did and many of the other members of the Liquor Committee. And they said, you know, we, we fought this last time and we were successful in defeating this legislation. But we realize now, we realize that if the current system does not change, we are going to be out of business because every grocery store will be selling beer. They found a way around that. Now recently, the convenience stores found their way around working within the current system to sell beer, to further put our beer distributors out of business. So we worked with them closely and, and we said, well, what do you need? Give us a list of what you would like to see. We would like to see, we would like to have the ability to sell six packs. There's a beer distributor near Harrisburg that, that sells a case of beer that ranges anywhere from 70 to $90 for one case of beer. And he said, you know, the customer that comes in and sees that price tag he doesn't want to spend that and maybe he doesn't like it, but you know, he would pay for a six pack to try that and then maybe come back and sell the beer. We want the opportunity to be able to sell a six pack. That's in this legislation to help the beer distributors, those small businesses, who by the way, you can only own five of these licenses. So this, this theory that big business is going to come in and gobble everything up is just ludicrous. We specifically put that protection in this legislation. What else did the beer distributors want? They wanted a licensing fee that was reasonable. That's why this fee is where it is. Grocery stores have to pay a heck of a lot more just for a wine license. They wanted installments. We put this in there for them. That's why it's here. That's why we're in the so-called banking business, because the beer distributors asked for that. Beer distributors wanted to be the only outlet for liquor the only outlet for liquor, this is in there, this is like ragu, isn't it? They're the only outlet for the sale of liquor, unlimited sale of liquor under this legislation. 
When we got back from Washington, I mentioned to one of the beer distributors that one of the stores in Washington had a growler stand. And they said, oh my, if we had that, I'd make so much money. I'd get rid of all my cigarettes and I would sell growlers. I'd make so much money. Well, that's in this bill. That's in this bill. Yet this week we got a letter from them that said, oh, we can't support this legislation. And I think I finally figured it out. They want to be the only outlet to sell alcohol and beer in the entire state of Pennsylvania. They don't want restaurants to sell anything. They don't want um, taverns to sell anything. They don't want clubs to sell anything. They just want to be the sole outlet. That's the only thing that's going to make them happy. Well, that's not the way this committee works. That's not the way this process works. It's a lot like playing whack-a-mole at Chuck E. Cheese. Boom, boom, you hit one and another one pops up. Well, I think today we finally got them all hit, and we're going to be able to pass this bill out of the House, and we're going to get it to the Senate for some, for some further discussions. There are some things that are not in this legislation that I would have liked to have seen. There, I can look at a lot of these faces out there, and I know the debate that went on earlier in committee and in meetings that we've had. There's a lot of other things you'd like to see in there as well, but this is part of a compromise. This is an exciting compromise for your constituents. This is an exciting compromise for you as legislators that are going to be, make, going to be able to make a historic vote, a historic vote to change the lives of Pennsylvanians, to open up private sector jobs. We even talked about that. I'm sorry, I forgot all about that. In Washington state, wholesale jobs alone, in a state that's a third of our size, I believe, 700 wholesale jobs, good paying wholesale jobs. All of these retail outlets, restaurants in Pennsylvania, beer distributors, are going to have their product delivered to them, unlike today, where they have to go to the state store and pick it up. It's going to be delivered, imagine that service, delivered to them we're going to have a lot more variety come into Pennsylvania to further drive down the cost of product. This is so exciting for Pennsylvania, and I was honored to be on the committee. I, wanted to th I want to thank my chairman again for his uh, excellent job in navigating this process, and I urge um, all the members to vote yes for 790. Thank you.